Hi, I'm Kim Camp with Hill Phoenix. Publix is carrying out a program to replace the expansion tanks on hydronic heat reclaimed systems for better system performance. In order that you, as a contractor, have the information that you need to perform this job properly to Hill Phoenix and Publix specifications, we've put together this video. We are also providing this instruction sheet that lays out step-by-step -step the procedures shown in this video. You may even want to refer to it as you watch, if you have it handy. You can also refer to the piping plan supplied with the parts kit. And as always, if you have any questions, please contact your local Hill Phoenix field support engineer or go to hillphoenix.com and from the resources tab at the top of the page, click field service engineer locator in the drop down if you're not sure who that person is. The systems on which the replacement expansion tanks are being installed will be in either a machine house or a mezzanine motor room. Some of these systems may lack adequate available floor space and require mounting the tank to the wall. Therefore, it is recommended that you check before starting the installation that you have all the piping and mounting materials required. Some systems may already have had a prior expansion tank replacement performed but these will need to be changed to the new tanks as well. As we go through the process for a typical machine house floor mount installation, we will also point out some of the differences from the other situations you may encounter. Let's begin by looking at the parts supplied by Hill Phoenix. Make sure before starting the job that you verify you have all of them on hand. Contact your field support engineer if any are missing. You will also need to be sure you have enough inch and 1 8 type L copper and any necessary fittings to complete the piping. The first steps in the process take place at the rack. The system glycol temperature needs to be from 75 to 80 degrees in order to confirm later that the system is properly charged. Isolating the heat exchanger from the system will allow the glycol to start cooling. Start by opening the discharge bypass to the hydronic loop heat exchanger. Next, close the discharge gas inlet to the hydronic loop heat exchanger. Do not close the outlet. Now, open the hydronic glycol loop bypass at the heat exchanger. Then, close the hydronic loop supply to the heat exchanger. Do not close the outlet. This will prevent overpressurizing the heat exchanger. At this point, you are ready to move to the pump station and begin preparing to remove the existing tank. We're starting here with a standard machine house. First, close the inlet ball valve to the expansion tank. Verify that the drain access ball valve is completely closed and then remove the drain access cap. Connect a standard hose from the drain access to a suitable container. Slowly open the drain access ball valve, keeping in mind that the fluid is under pressure. Lead the fluid into the container until all of the fluid drains. Remove the existing tank strap that secures it in place. Now you can dismantle it from the piping. Make sure to use a backup wrench on the charging port tee to which the tank is connected so that the assembly above does not move. Keep in mind that even after draining, the tank at this point will likely still contain some residual glycol. So, you'll want to properly drain the tank before disposing of it. The next step is to locate the position for the new tank. The goal is to place the tank close enough to the charging port T to which it will be piped so as to minimize piping while at the same time maintaining access for serviceability and clearance of any obstructions. These obstructions could include other piping or equipment that might be in the way. Or, if there's no adequate floor space available, the tank may have to be mounted to the machine house wall's vertical bracing. Hill Phoenix part number 30080 can be used in this situation. Only use the wall's vertical bracing and not the wall panels for attachment. Assemble parts supplied by Hill Phoenix to the half inch T from the existing assembly to the inline air separator using non-hardening pipe red sealant.
Before you attach the dielectric union, disassemble it to remove all the seals in order to prevent damaging them while soldering. Use a backup wrench taking care not to over torque the new assembly which includes a 2 inch by half inch MPT nipple, a half inch to 3 quarter inch adapter, a 3 quarter to 1 inch adapter, and a 1 inch dielectric unit. Solder 1 inch type L copper tubing to the 1 inch male adapter. The length of the tubing will be determined by the location of the new expansion tank that you established earlier. Now, attach this assembly to the expansion tank 1 inch access port using non hardening pipe thread seal. Support the tank access port while tightening but be sure not to over torque the fitting. Fit the expansion tank assembly to the inline air separator assembly using best piping practices. This includes checking that all of your joints are soldered correctly. You can now secure the tank to each of the supports or platforms. Drill a 3 8 inch hole at an easily accessible point along the horizontal 1 inch copper line to the tank. Then, braze in the quarter inch flare access port that was one of the parts supplied by Hill Phoenix. Be sure to remove the valve cap and isolation packing nut before brazing to prevent damaging them. Reassemble those parts when the brazed access port has sufficiently cooled. Reassemble the dielectric union with the seals you previously removed and tighten the connection to ensure it's watertight. Be careful not to over torque the connection. With everything assembled, you're now ready to check and pre-charge the new tank. First, Check the pressure on the expansion tank bladder and adjust as needed with an air pump to the design pressure of 15 PSIG. Next, water test the new lines and expansion tank by using a standard hose to add water from the domestic water system through the drain access below the inline air separator. Ensure that air is purged from the new assembly through the access port that was added the horizontal run to the expansion tank as one of the final steps in the assembly process. Then, pressurize the assembly to the domestic water system pressure. Carefully leak check the entire assembly. Once the system is confirmed leak free, drain all the water out before proceeding to the next step. Open the access port slowly to relieve the pressure on the line. Using a standard hose, connect a fluid pump to the hose connection below the inline air separator assembly. Add only approved propylene glycol. As with any other glycol system, do not mix glycol from more than one manufacturer as the different inhibitors used in their products could cause damage to the system. You must match what is currently in the system. Purge all the air from the line to the expansion tank while adding the glycol. Continue charging only until all of the air is removed. Make sure to not overpressurize as damage to the tank bladder could result. At this point, the hydronic heat reclaim system can now be brought online with the new assembly. Open the ball valve so that the new expansion tank assembly is now online with the hydronic system. Reduce the hydronic loop glycol temperature if necessary to 75 to 80 degrees outlet temperature. At that point, add glycol until the return glycol pressure is at 15 PSIG. This is your indication that the system is properly charged. 
The next steps in this part of the process are the reverse of the ones performed at the rack back at the beginning. This will bring the heat exchanger back online. Open the hydronic glycol loop supply to the heat exchanger and close the hydronic glycol loop bypass at the heat exchanger. Open the discharge gas inlet to the hydronic loop heat exchanger and close the discharge bypass to the hydronic loop heat exchanger. You've now completed the mechanical steps in the process. The only remaining steps are performed in the controller. Here, ensure that the pump enable is controlled only by glycol return pressure with the set points of 5 PSIG cut in and 2 PSIG cut out. Set the program to alarm at 2 PSIG. Enter zero delay for cut out and alarm and one minute for cut in. Remove any additional pump control as necessary. Lastly, remove the 30 pound condenser shift in the condenser setup. That's the process. It's basically the same for all the variations we've looked at, but with a few minor differences. As we mentioned in the beginning, if you have any questions, refer to the instruction sheet or reach out to your field support engineer. Thanks for watching.